Hi everyone, my name is Coach Sabrina. I am a grief and gratitude coach. Um, so I provide services to individuals who are looking to move forward in their grief. So I do that by supporting them on that journey, providing them with tips, strategies, helping them to goal set and really move forward into a life of gratitude after that experience. So just a little bit about me and how I came about into this journey. So I have a background in mental health. Um, I've been doing mental health for about five years, and then I moved into higher education, right, where I was able to talk about um, or work on um, equity and access. And so throughout all of that time, I am passionate about equity and access, and even as it relates to grief. And so my whole goal is to point people to resources, to point them to a more fulfilling life, and to encourage people and let them know that there is life in the experience with you. So that's how I'm doing that in the space of a coach as well as providing those services. I love it. Yes, I, I love that you mentioned, you know, access being something that's really necessary, right? Because not everyone mm -hmm. has the same access to resources and information. Um, and we already kind of live in a grief insensitive society, if that makes sense, right? Like mm -hmm. bereavement okay. is not very long. When you lose someone, you only get like a couple days off of work and then they expect you back fully functioning and, you know, um, mm -hmm. productive and everything like that. And so we don't live in a society, I think that's really supportive of a grieving person, which I mean, almost all of us, if not all of us are grieving people in some way, um, and and so I love that you mentioned just wanting to make sure that people recognize that they have resources and support and that, you know, they can maybe work through what's really challenging mm -hmm. with support instead of trying to do it by themselves. Because I think a lot of people are, are lonely in their experience and feel like they don't have anyone they can talk to or, you know, or have anyone that understands or at least like tries to hold space for them. And when you said grief and gratitude, I'm like, wow, that's two things that maybe some people would say don't necessarily go together are hard, hard to put mm -hmm, together mm -hmm. um, because, you know, sometimes it's hard to find what to be grateful for when you're grieving. And I think that it's a, a, a wonderful way to heal through the process, to use gratitude as a tool. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's really cool what you're doing. And so many people need the support that that's why I was excited to have you on the show. Um, and I know grief is a part of my story. People ask me, you know, a lot about about grief and and how it's affected me and it's an ongoing an ongoing process for yeah, forever absolutely. and always mm -hmm. i would love to hear for you um what would you say are common factors that you see either in your own experience or when you talk to people when it comes to dealing with grief and and trying to move past it like do you feel like the people that are more successful at managing grief i don't know spend more time in quiet reflection or yeah. you know they like what are these common denominators for those who are really successful um in being able to manage grief good question so i don't know that i would say you know there's one thing there's a combination of things and it really just depends on the individual so one of the things that I like to share with people when I'm working with them is it's a process. So that's the first thing, like really think about you're not going to be ready to move forward tomorrow. And even when you get to that place where you are experiencing gratitude, because, you know, some people look at me and they're like, and I've actually had a friend ask me a question, like, how did you get to this place of gratitude, right? And you've gone through so much grief in yourself. And I'm like, it's an everyday process. There are some days where I have these brief bursts and they hit me and I'm like, oh my God, you know, I'm about to cry. I want to sit in my bed all day and not see anyone. And then there are some days when I'm so full of joy, so full of gratitude that I want to share it with the world. So I would say one of those factors is giving yourself time, right? Giving yourself time to work the process and telling yourself that it's okay if today doesn't look like yesterday. And if today doesn't look like tomorrow as well. So giving yourself that time. I would also say um, what's helpful is owning your emotions and embracing those emotions. 
So grief comes with so many different emotions. Some emotions you don't even realize you have until you go through grief. You're like, Dad, I didn't know I could feel this. I didn't know this even existed. And so really embracing that and giving yourself permission to feel however you choose to feel. Um, giving yourself permission to say, I feel this way today, but yesterday I feel different, right? And tomorrow you may feel different again. And then you mentioned earlier about, you know, being alone. Knowing that you're not alone in this process, there are other people who have gone through grief. Even if it's not the same type of grief that you've gone through, that's probably someone in every circle that has gone through some type of grief, right? And so being able to have those connections and talk to people and say, tell me about yours, and then I'll tell you about mine, and feeling comfortable actually talking about it. Like so many people are afraid to even talk about grief because it's like, oh my God, I don't want to cry, or I don't want to burst out in tears. And I'd be like, go ahead and burst out in tears. Go ahead and cry. It's okay. It's a part of life. Like we unfortunately that's what happens right we have to go through that everybody's going to go through losing someone or losing something and you're going to have to go through that pain so you know work the process embrace the emotions and then do your best to try to connect with a community or a support system um, that can help you through that as well i love that you said work the process embrace the emotions and get connected to a community um because sometimes it's it's easier to get caught up when you don't have any outside feedback or support. Um, and sometimes mm -hmm. it's actually easier to feel certain things in the context of hearing someone else's story or experience. Um, and so I'm going to work backward through the, the mm -hmm. you know, the different things that you mentioned. Embracing the emotions, right? Like I'm a therapist and I've, I'm uncomfortable with grief. <laughs> I've been grieving my whole life pretty much. Yeah. And I'm uncomfortable with grief and, and knowing that we all, you know, experience it differently. Um, and that it's okay if you experience it differently than someone else does. Mm -hmm. Um, there is no right way or one way, right. um, to grieve. And that comes down to what you said first, which is that it's a process. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I don't know where we learned it, where we got this crazy idea mm -hmm. that like healing quote unquote is a destination where it's like you get there and then it stops. Um, right. when really it's this constant ongoing process that evolves over and over again, um, with time and with new experiences. And I know for me, you know, I lost my mom when I was about five and my dad passed away when I was about 24. And mm -hmm. that's just, those were just loss of people. Mm -hmm. There's different types of loss, you know, there's job loss, there's mm -hmm. a pet loss, there's friendship right. loss. If a mm -hmm. friendship, you know, is no longer the way that it used to be, there's just so many different ways that we can experience loss. Um, and that for me, I know that I like to be kind of like, left alone and with myself at certain points, because for me, it seems easier to process yeah. that way, you know, but I still want people to check on me. So it's like yeah. self-awareness, if I can add that on to what you're mentioning helps too, because if you know yourself yes. and it's easier yes, to, to do your best to meet your own needs, but also to be able to communicate, you know what I mean? What you think you might need at the time and then for it to be okay if it changes, you know, it's like, I want company, but know that mm -hmm. hopefully it's a person that right. you can say, you know what? I think I just want to go to sleep, you know? And so I think um, knowing yourself equips you with the the resource of clarity and communication um, yeah. when it comes to figuring out like, what do you, what kind of, what do you want your support to look like and yeah. how can you um, advocate for that in some way? But, okay. So then obviously grief is hard, like AF. Yeah. So, so there's that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, of course it's challenging, right? right? What would you say is like the number one thing that brings someone to wanting to work with you or, or, or ask you questions? You know what I mean? Like, what is it that attracts them to wanting to, to learn more about what you do? Yeah. So you said something when you were just talking about, um, how we were taught that healing is a destination. And so one of the things that I share in the e-journal that I wrote is, and that's, that was one of the reasons why I titled it Grief and Gratitude, to really teach people that it's not so much of you reaching a goal or reaching a destination, but learning how to coexist, right? And so most of the time when people come and talk to me um, about grief or when they reach out to me, one is because they have heard about me going through grief. 
you know, they've heard about that journey. And so they're like, oh, girl, like, oh, my God, like, please talk to me. But then the other thing is because I talk about this um, relationship of grief and gratitude together and how they can go coexist, right? So it's okay that yesterday I may have been bawling my eyes out, but then today I'm like super joyful and want to go to the beach and want to swim and want to you know, post uh, cute little selfies and stuff on, on Instagram. And so a lot of times it's, it's curiosity and they're like, okay, I'm trying to figure out what she's talking about. Like, how can you have grief and gratitude? Like, let me talk to her. Let me get some information. And I think it's because of what you said earlier, we've been taught, one, not to talk about grief, that we can't embrace it and that it shouldn't be something that we are excited about or something that we can talk about on a regular basis because it brings us these such these intense and raw emotions but it's a part of life so just like gratitude and joy and happiness and abundance is a part of life so is grief so is sadness so is you know pain and sorrow and so for me learning how to mesh those things together and talking to people that those two things can co coexist two things can be right at the same time two things can be true at the same time and grief and gratitude can coexist and can be true at the same time so i feel like that's one of the things or that's one of the primary things that draw people in to come and talk to me more so that curiosity of trying to figure out where this whole thing came from but also because they want to hear my story and how i got to this place i love it yeah you know you're talking and i was thinking about um the movie inside out right and so they're telling yeah. sadness not to touch the memories or whatever. And really at the end, spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen Inside Out, um, we come to the conclusion <laughs> that, ooh, send me a DM if you're mad about it. Um, we come to the conclusion <laughs> that multiple emotions can occupy the same space and it's okay. You know what I mean? I think of emotions as um, colors and yeah. while the colors can stand still on a palette, you can also mix them together and they turn into different colors. And so, you know, I think that grief is one of life's experiences that is like almost a mix of all the colors and then it turns like brown, you know? Like, <laughs> um, it's a mix of all the colors because you feel anger, you feel sadness, you feel excited because you remember certain memories. There's joy mixed in there. There's heartbreak. Mm -hmm. There's love. Like, you know, I think grief is, oh gosh, one of my friends um, posted something recently. It's like grief is a sign that you're alive. Like the cost yes. of love, yes. the cost of love is grief because you don't grieve unless you cared. Yeah. And so it's a sign that you're alive. It's a sign that you um, aren't a sociopath or a psychopath. So that's good. Right. Um, <laughs> and and it's the cost of, of caring about people or caring mm -hmm. about certain life circumstances or, or whatever the case may be. And so, okay, Absolutely. curiosity and gratitude. And, and so interesting that you said that because I think, you know, from the outside looking in, when mm -hmm. someone sees someone, I'm going to imagine one day they're crying and can't get out of bed. And then the next day they're on the beach, cute, taking selfies that mm -hmm. that might look odd to someone on the outside looking in mm -hmm. and to make whatever judgment that they might make right. without understanding the context of, of the experience. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, it's just so dynamic. It's so, it's so deep, but you said yeah. they also come for your story. What parts of your story do you feel like are resonate with people most? I would say, so what I talk about most on social media is my most, my most recent loss, which was my mom. She died in 2018 or transition, as I like to say, she transitioned in 2018. Um, however, people who have been following me prior to that, wrote a book in 2018 too. Isn't that crazy? Like actually three months after I published my first book, my mom passed away. And in that book, I talked a lot about childhood grief um, with my own father. So, you know, I witnessed my dad um, when I was three, he was taken into prison. And that's another part of grief that sometimes I think people don't acknowledge. Like we always think grief is about death, right? But grief comes in a lot of different forms and from a lot of different situations and incidents. And so, you know, incarceration is something that's really big that causes grief for a lot of different people. 
And so I witnessed that at three. And then just going through Passion of Trials, my first, my first real um, like episode with death, I remember, I don't remember how old I was, but I was old enough to remember my dad's grandmother passing away. And, and then my mom's grandmother passing away as well. And literally, like, I can see in my head me going to their funerals and seeing them laying in the casket and me like, what's going on? What's wrong with them? You know, are they sleep? Are they this? And I remember not having an explanation of what this was and what this felt like. It was literally just like, great grandmother is here where grandmother is gone and they're sleeping. And as a child, you know, when you are told that they're sleeping, that means that they're going to eventually wake up. And so we, they don't never wake up. It's like, well, what does that mean? You know, so having that, then I lost my sister when I was 13. She was 14 and she drowned right in front of me. That's one of the hardest um, incidents of grief that I don't talk a, a lot about. I actually, for the first time, shared that publicly in the book that I wrote, and that's called The Naked Truth. And I wrote in detail about that story because it was, one, it was the first time that I had experienced grief in such an intense way. And that was also my first understanding of how to deal with grief. And one of the things I share with people is that Depending on the stage of life that you in, a lot of times that determines how you're going to deal with that grief moving forward. So I was 13, right? And I didn't have anyone to come and talk to me and tell me, should react this way? I should react that way. I just witnessed a tragedy right in front of my eyes. You know what I mean? And so I had to then deal with everything that came with that. And then you had a mother and a father who was dealing with their emotions. And I had older siblings who was dealing with their emotions. And then it was just me by myself trying to figure out how do you now navigate life with someone who was pretty much glued to your hip, right? So now I'm 13, navigating, losing my sister and then transitioning into high school. And so I got to a point where I shut that down. Like I literally locked that part of my life away and I refused to talk about it for years. And so publishing that book was really the first time I had actually spoke about it in, in a very detailed and public way. And so a lot of people didn't know about that story. They were curious because again, I have a tattoo or people who knew me back in that day, they knew it but I had never talked about it publicly. And so, and then my father as well, he passed away three years prior to my mom. So in 2015, you know, my, my dad passed and then my mom in 2018. So I talk more so about my mom a lot. And I think that's how a lot of people are connected to me because of my mom, but not knowing that I have all of those other incidents as well. You know, I have to just commend you on your vulnerability and mm -hmm. courageousness mm -hmm. um, because it's it's not easy to to talk about yeah. loss and it's not easy to mm -hmm. be vulnerable and say some of these things out loud. You know what I mean? As you're talking, it's kind of reminding me of, of some of my losses. And and mm -hmm. I think like you mentioned, depending on you know, where you're at in your journey and how old you are and just some different factors, it contributes to how you end up grieving. And so as mm -hmm. you're talking, I'm remembering things that maybe I've kind of put in a shelf, you know, mm -hmm. in my mind mm -hmm. somewhere that I haven't thought about in some time or whatever the yeah. case may be. And um, everything, it you know, occurs out of like self-preservation and, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and protecting ourselves and being able to keep going and put one right. foot in front of the other. But I love that you mentioned that maybe writing has been something that has helped you to work through, to, mm -hmm. you know, encapsulate and mm -hmm. and be able to just manage the experience. I can't imagine what it was like to actually write it all out, to go through the experience of writing it. And then that you would like publish it. That's a whole nother level, right? Yeah. For people to be able to, for people to, yeah. be able to read, um, you know, your story and experience. I just published a book and I'm like, who? Like my idea yeah. is going to be out there. My story is yeah. going to be out there. Um, and so I just have to commend you on on your courageousness, right? It takes Thank bravery you. to do mm -hmm. something like that. And I think 
you know, maybe that's something that we don't talk about in grief is like grief to some extent requires bravery. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So boy, you know, and it's deep because I feel like everyone in their life has like a theme that keeps mm -hmm. coming back that they have mm -hmm. to work through. When we think about video games, right? Like Sonic always has Sonic and there's like these things, there's, it always looks the same when you go to another level, but there's always right. going to be a challenge, right? Absolutely. Sonic is never going to look like Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto is never going to look like Pac-Man, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when you're talking about that, it reminds me that one of the things that I oftentimes have said when I've talked about grief is I feel like loss is one of, is like a part of my video game. And yeah. so on different levels in life, it's something that keeps coming back for me Absolutely. to be able to master or to manage at that vantage point, you know? And so it's like, yeah. you've had loss occur for you since you were three in different ways. Mm -hmm. And it keeps coming back for you to be able to navigate it from a new vantage point. Mm -hmm. And so I think for some people, when it's like things keep happening, like if it's loss after loss, it's job loss, home loss, friend loss, relationship loss, right. you know, um, death or someone transitioning, someone thinks like, why does this keep happening to me? Or mm -hmm. what's, you know, like what's wrong with me or what's going on in my life that this is the case, as opposed to being able to reframe that to say like, what is this teaching me? Or how is this Absolutely. a natural part of life that, you know, I'm learning how to, to manage. If someone is grieving right now mm -hmm. and listening or, and grieving could be, it's a fresh loss or it could be 20 years down the line, you mm -hmm. know, like if someone is feeling grief, what would you say is like, you know, one go-to thing that they can think about or do to help them manage that today? So I would say, and I, I mentioned this in the journal that I wrote is um, figure out what brings you joy and find that thing that brings you joy and do that as much as you potentially can, right? It doesn't matter what it is. And I even say sometimes to people, and I found myself saying this recently to a friend, she's like, well, what if that, what if that is spending money? And I was like, well, and I'm talking to a money mindset coach here, so she, she might not agree. But I told her, I was like, you know, for the interim, if that's what you feel like you need to do, then figure out a way to do it where you're not living on the street next month, right? You know, but I understand that that looks differently. And I try to give people ideas of what could potentially be different things that they can do. And sometimes it may mean finding a new hobby. So you mentioned about me writing. I started writing when my sister passed. So when I was 13, I started keeping a journal. And so I've been keeping a journal since I was 13. And here I am now, 30. And that was one of the things that I found. It was a way... It not only brought me joy, but it was also a way for me to say what I couldn't say out loud to other people. It was a way for me to say what I needed to say. It was a way for me to express my emotions in a way that even if I never said it out loud to anybody, I got that out. And for every single loss, what brought me joy looked completely different. You know, so like with my sister, I started journaling. With my dad, I... Um, I actually quit my job that was stressing me out. <laughs> I quit my job. And then I found the job that led me into the career that I had chosen for that time of life. I been really wanting to get out of the job that I was in, really wanting to step into um, educational equity. And quitting that job really gave me that boldness and that braveness to step into the next dimension, right? And then with my mom, one of the things that I've always wanted to be more active in and being creative. So I'm, I was never really the child who knew how to draw or paint or color. Like I got my first D in right? But I always wanted to do it. And then I got to a place with my mom where that part of my identity just opened up. Right? And I started painting. I started coloring. I started doing these things. And it was something that really brought me joy because it was something that I always wanted to do um that I, that I didn't do because of fear or whatever and I had such a once once I lost my mom I had such a sort of I don't 
care attitude about everything, that I didn't care about a little bit. So that sort of put that kind of boldness in me to go out and do it. Um, another thing that I would say too, in that doing something that brings you joy are grief projects. So um, my grief project was my mom was a servant and she served her whole entire life, whether it was in ministry, whether it was in the community, whether it was her family. And the other thing about her, so outside of being a servant, she wore hats. Every time you saw her, she had a hat on. So I decided that I wanted to honor her, but also help other people. And so um, my siblings and I came together and we created these hats full of hygiene products. And we went and gave them out to the community, donated them to group homes, um, gave them to churches and things like that. And that grief project, again, brought me that sense of joy because I was serving someone else. I was helping somebody else. And I was walking in the legacy that my mom had taught us as well. So if if I had to say one thing, I would say find that one thing or those couple things that brings you joy and do that thing as much as possible. Hold on to that as much as possible. That's really great. You know, I, I think that what you mentioned is really significant when it comes to being able to take the time to identify, right? That's why I think that self-awareness is key. Mm -hmm. What is it that brings you joy in that? And then know that it might change because sometimes we try to do the same thing over again mm -hmm. and it doesn't work. And then we're like, oh, what the heck? But know that it may be different at different yeah. seasons in your life that you might have to pull, like call on or cultivate Absolutely. something completely different than you have in the past. Um, I am a money mindset coach, but I do, mm -hmm. okay, I do think that we have to learn how to enjoy money and that this is the whole reason why I do this right. work because I want specifically women, mm -hmm. but everyone, I want women to be able to do what they have to when life happens. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like maybe to happens. some extent, like, yeah, absolutely. maybe this is why you have... Uh, uh, you want to have your savings at a certain place so that if you want to take time off to mm -hmm. grieve longer than your job gives you PTO for, then you can and you're covered. That if you, you know, if you want mm -hmm. to be able to maybe do a project or to take a trip or to, you know, whatever it yeah. is, that if you're in, in charge of your money, if you're doing really well and stewarding your money, then when life happens, you're not screwed because you have to Absolutely. do certain things mm -hmm. based on you know how you've dealt with money and so if you spending some money out there girl you listening okay yes. Sabrina's friend, <laughs> that's fine you know um i don't think that, i don't think that i do think though that we want to be to some extent cautious because sometimes right. when we grieve we don't want to make huge decisions while we're grieving Absolutely. when it's mm -hmm. fresh Sometimes we want to practice some level of like stillness. And I think that's why it's nice to have support and things like that to be able to say like, you know, I'm going to sell my house right now. It's like, yeah, I'm going to buy this house right now. And it's like, it's been And don't month. quit your job okay. like I did. <laughs> we did not tell you to do anything wild, so cool. okay, in the process of grieving. That's a disclaimer. But if you do yes. whatever you do, that's your life. Okay. Um so it's like sometimes, you know, you want to practice some level of like stillness, but maybe it's also helpful to have um, consult to yeah. be able to make sure that to some level, the choices that are being made make sense for your life. Um, I do think, like you said, grief will make you bold. Grief will make mm -hmm. you act different than you've ever acted in your life Absolutely. because I think it's just a very um, clear, like it's in your face. You can't, yeah. you can't hide from it and so then mm -hmm. when you're not hiding you can get really honest yeah and absolutely. i think that <laughs> you've read the lies we tell ourselves right i think that yeah. a lot of times in our life we you know are going through the motions and we think that we have tomorrow and we think we have a hundred years and we think yeah. we've got millions of choices and opportunity yes we do but at the same time we don't we mm -hmm. need to mm -hmm. strike while the iron is hot and the iron is hot today and so i think that that's what grief reminds us of a lot of the time yeah. um so that we can really just show up and and be as authentic it sounds like yeah. with every loss from what you mentioned it it strips away any layer mm -hmm. of things that kept you from being authentic on a whole new level in your life. Absolutely. Yeah. I would say like you, you talked about money and that's one of the things that I feel like we don't talk about. 
specifically says is money worth. And so, again, with every loss, it was a different situation. You know, my dad didn't have insurance when he died. And so we as a, as a sibling, we had to figure this thing out. Like, okay, how do we make this happen, right? And because of that situation, it made my mom go get insurance, which was something she didn't have before. And so that creates a whole nother dynamic if money is an issue when it's time to grieve. Like if you have a nice savings or you have insurance or the person who passed had insurance or whatever the case may be, then it's easier for you to focus on you and your emotions and how to get through the process and how to move forward. But if you don't, and money is an issue and you don't have savings, like you said, like you can't take the time off work. I took a whole month long sabbatical when my mom passed. I quit my job when my day passed. And I took a whole month off of work when my mom passed. But because I felt comfortable enough in my financial situations at the time to make those decisions. So also that's really important as you're talking about um, knowing that grief is going to happen, right? And and that's one of the things that I say to people, like, prepare for grief as much as possible because it's something that's going to happen. And if you prepare for it, then you're able to walk through it without all of the other stuff that comes with it. And one of the ways to help yourself prepare for grief is to, is to prepare financially, whether that's getting insurance, whether that's saving up money, um, whether that's working at a job that has... PTO or short-term disability or whatever those benefits is so that that's less that you have to worry about when that time comes, not if, because it's a when that time comes for you, you won't feel the stress of money over the stress of grieving your loved one. Oh, so, so good. I didn't tell her to talk about money, y'all. But that's not what we started talking about. No, but it she came, didn't. <laughs> and, okay. It came into the conversation because it happens. And how many times I know that as a therapist, it has come up in the therapy room when I'm talking to, to folks and that they are dealing with something, but they can't grieve the way that they want to. They can't do what they feel like they need because of their financial situation. And so you mentioning like preparing mm-hmm. for grief because it's a when, not an if, you know, is a part of being financially responsible and doing your best to, you know, figure out what that looks like for you. You reminded me of something that I had forgotten to say before, yeah. which is like maybe having like a grief sinking fund, you know what I mean? Um, um, amongst managing your money in general, mm-hmm. that it might be helpful to have a sinking fund that co- that coincides with like, what if your friend has a loss? Do you want to be able to donate to a mm-hmm. GoFundMe or something like that or whatever. Mm-hmm. What if they're, you know, like just having a, a savings fund that goes to supporting people in this state. And then also you can pull from that for yourself if need be. Um, we can get crazy and have millions of sinking funds. But, you know, I know that grief is something that a lot yeah. of my friends deal with. And so I have in my calendar, mm-hmm. you know, people's, their their lost dates and then like birthdays and things like that. Mm-hmm. So if I have a friend whose mom's birthday is coming up, if I have this sinking fund, then I can say, okay, let me send her some flowers or something, you know, to yeah. let her know I'm thinking mm-hmm. about her or whatever. And so I think it's, it's about ourselves, but it's also like, how can we show up if we live in a society that's not sensitive to grief? How can we show up and be sensitive to grief for those that we care about or that are around us? Um, yeah, but it's it's deep. This conversation yeah. has been so good, <laughs> y'all. It sounds like you need to go ahead and get this this journal that she's yeah. got. It sounds like you need to go ahead and get this book that she done wrote. It sounds yeah. like you need to go ahead and get connected. So where can everyone find you and stay in contact and, and ask you questions and stuff? Yeah, so absolutely. So I am on social media, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, as Sabrina L. Donegan, and that's just my name across the social media handles. And then my website where you can check out the the journal, the book, as well as coaching services is griefandgratitude.net. Um, and so that's, again, it's griefandgratitude.net. Um, but also, if you're just looking, I do also have a grief and gratitude um, free support group, and it is offline. And I do it offline because, you know, people want to be able to be comfortable to share what they want to share. And sometimes they're able to be super interested in that. Um, so if you send me a DM, even on Facebook or Instagram, I can send you the link for that. 
support group. And really, that's just an opportunity, again, for you to kind of connect with other individuals who are in the same space as you or, you know, um, dealing with some of the same issues, but also for you to learn and educate yourself as well on this journey um, in, in terms of that as well. I love it. Thank you so much, Sabrina, for coming on the show, for sharing your gems. As one of the community members of Wealth and Wellness University, it is my pleasure to know you, to support you, to get to watch your journey evolve and, you know, just be able to um, see how you can continue to do this work and how I can support you in it. So anyone watching or listening, please feel free to send this episode to someone that you know that might need to hear something that was said, um, make sure to get connected and and mm-hmm. follow her on Instagram, visit her website, get on the email list, y'all. Okay, don't yeah. play these reindeer <laughs> games with me. If you felt like something was said that resonated with you, act on the energy that you're experiencing mm-hmm. um, because it's a signal. It's telling you, you know, to head in a direction that's probably supportive of your growth and healing. And so yeah. I know this conversation has been so wonderful for me. I didn't even know that I needed to have the conversation, but now I'm like, okay, <laughs> how, can I, how can I go through the day like living boldly? You know, yeah. I, I think that that's kind of my key takeaway. I always ask about key takeaways and my action item is to to be my authentic self today to show up and to do my best to serve. Um, It's one of the things that my husband actually said is why he, you know, was interested in learning more about me was because I said, what if today was our last day? Like, how would you live differently if you knew today was your last day? And that comes from grief because I experienced grief so early on in my life that it was very clear that life is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. So if today was it, y'all, who would you send a text message to? Who would you, you know, be as a person? If someone cut you off in traffic, are you going to get upset? Are you just going to be like, okay, you know, like (laughs) more power to Mm -hmm. them. Um, So I appreciate you for coming on and being so open, so honest, vulnerable, and courageous and sharing your gems Man, what a journey. Um, we'll have to have you come back. I think people are going to want to hear some more. <laughs> yeah, and I thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to your audience. But also just to, just to share my journey and share pieces of me that people may not always get to see and may not always know. Um, so I'm appreciative of that. I love it, y'all. So yeah. you heard what to do, get connected, yeah. and we will talk to you next time, Gems.